Good evening, church family. We want to come to you and just uh, thank you for tuning in with us tonight. Uh, we're going to be looking at Philippians chapter 4, uh, verses 10 through 13 tonight. Uh, we're going to wait just another minute or so uh, as people are starting to log in. Uh, so I'm going to have a little, hopefully a little background music. Hopefully you'll enjoy that. And I'll be back with you in just a minute or so. Uh, we'll get started. Thank you. Good evening, church family. I uh, want to thank you for tuning in with us uh, tonight through Facebook and YouTube. Um, and I know I, you know I was able to come to you a couple weeks ago with a message, and I appreciate Brother Bill uh, giving, giving me an opportunity every couple weeks right now uh, to teach um, uh, through, this, through this venue. Um, and uh, tonight, again, we're going to be looking at Philippians uh, chapter 4, verses 10 through 13. Uh, a couple weeks ago, we looked at Philippians 4, 1 through 9. Uh, that's where I was going through with our youth uh, before we uh, before coronavirus hit, uh, going through the book of Philippians. Uh, and again, we're looking at 4, 1 through 9. Last time, just kind of remind you of what we how we finished off last time. Things I wanted to encourage you in. Hopefully you are have applied some of those things uh, from that message. Uh, our message was that we need to make sure that we are rejoicing in the Lord, uh, that we are known for our graciousness. Uh, we are known uh, to, we, we are to, to replace our anxiety with peace. Uh, with the peace of God through prayer, uh, to think on praiseworthy things, and to continue to practice and improve on the on these things, uh, and so it becomes second nature. And so that's what we that's where we left off a couple weeks ago on verse nine. And so tonight we're going to be picking up in, in Philippians uh, four ten through thirteen. Uh, one of the most popular quoted verses comes from this text tonight, uh, and that's Philippians four thirteen. And I'm sure a lot of you could quote that. Uh, with, with me right now, and we're going to quote that in a minute, but of course, probably the most famous verse is John 3.16, uh, but again, Philippians 4.13, what does it say? Uh, it says, I can do all things through him who gives me strength, or I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, and so that's, that, that is a very popular verse, um, and so tonight we're going to look at what does it really mean that I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Uh, hopefully uh, that we're going to see tonight uh, there are our, our, our time together that we need to let our strength and contentment be found in Christ. That our strength and contentment should be found in Christ. And so I'm going to read verses 10 through 13 uh, so you can follow along with me tonight. Uh, verses 10 through 13 in Philippians chapter 4. In verse 10 it says, I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at length you have revived your concern for me. You were indeed concerned for me, but you had no opportunity. Not that I am speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know to be I know how to be brought low and how to abound. In any and every circumstance I have learned the secret of facing plenty uh, and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Let's pray. Dearly Father, God, we come before you, Lord. We thank you for this evening. God, we thank you for these verses. Lord, I pray, uh, Lord, over the next few moments, Lord, as we look at these verses, God, that you will speak to us uh, in a mighty way. And Lord, give us encouragement, give us strength, Lord, that can only come from you. And Lord, we love you. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Again, hopefully we, we will see tonight that, that we let, need to let our strength and contentment be found in Christ and in Christ alone. Um, you know, in verse 10, uh, Paul uh, was thankful for the church at Philippi. He was thankful uh, for their for their gratitude and their generosity. Uh, Paul, again, if you go back and you look in, in Acts chapter 16, Paul helped start the church at Philippi. And, um, and Paul uh, was able to be in Lydia's house uh, at, at, at times. And, uh, and, and Lydia and the other, other, other ones there in, in, in Acts chapter 16. Um, 
And so we know that, that, that the church supported Paul financially in some way. Um, from I mean, the 49 AD to, 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 to 67 AD, somehow the, the church had, had been helping Paul financially during this time. Uh, there was a t short time where Paul was not being helped financially. We don't know if it was because the church of Philippi maybe had some financial hard times or because they just couldn't get, get resources to Paul because of the circumstances of where he was. But Paul was grateful for this church. And his, and his gratefulness for the church didn't come from, from anything financial. He was grateful because they were truly concerned for him. And Paul was truly concerned for the church. Um, as of right now, I mean, we, we, as a staff, we are concerned for the church. We are concerned for the people. We are concerned for the nation around us. And, and, and that's why we're taking the precautions that we are. And so, um, but and again, Paul though goes on and he talks uh, over the next couple, uh, next three verses. He talks about how being, how to be content in every circumstance that God had put him in. And that's not an easy thing for us to think about. Not an easy thing for us to, to do, especially right now. Be content where we're at. Be content in our society where we're at right now. And so it's not an easy. It wasn't an easy lesson uh, for believers then. It's not an easy lesson for believers now. But Paul tells the church that we need to pursue being content in God's plan. We need to pursue being content in God's plan. So we need to be content that God has a plan for us. Be content in God's plan. Christian contentment is a, a, a Christian contentment is about believing that Christ is enough. Christian contentment is about, about believing that Christ is enough through everything that Christ alone and Christ alone is enough to. To, to get me through every single circumstance. Contentment was rare in Paul's day, and it is rare in our day as well. And so, you know, what, what, as, as we are content in God's plan, one thing that I hope we see is that contentment is not, is, is unconnected to our circumstances. Commit, uh, commit, uh, con contentment is unconnected to our circumstances. Our current circumstances aren't normal, and I wouldn't even pretend uh, to, that, that, that they are normal. Uh, Paul stressed this through these verses that contentment didn't increase or decrease due to, to material provision. Uh, for us right now, our contentment can't be found in our love of sports. It can't be found in our love of entertainment. It can't be found in even coming to church. Um, and you know, Coming to church is, is a great thing, but that shouldn't be where our contentment is found anyway. Our contentment should be found in Christ and in Christ alone. And so, you know, having more stuff or less stuff doesn't bring uh, doesn't bring uh, deeper satisfaction in the relationship with Christ. So our contentment should be found in Christ and Him alone. I came across a poem this week when I was studying these verses, and it's a poem uh, that's actually from Dear Abby, uh, from a 1989, from a 14 year old boy named Jason Lehman. I believe that's how you pronounce it, and it's called Pre uh, Present Tense. Uh, and I think it's something that, that really really is, is a pretty deep poem. If you look at it, if you think about it. Um, and I think a lot of us in, in our society are, are, are this way, uh, even uh, during this time, not just during this time, but a lot of times. And so he, here is his poem called Pre, uh, uh, Present Tense. It was spring, but it was summer I wanted. The warm days and the great outdoors. It was summer, but fall I wanted. The colorful leaves and the cool dry air. It was fall. But it was winter I wanted. The beautiful snow and the joy of the holiday season. It was winter and it was spring I wanted. The warmth and the blossoming of nature. I was a child, but it, but, but it was adulthood I wanted. The freedom and respect. I was 20, but it was 30 I wanted. To be mature and sophisticated. The middle age, but I was middle aged. But it was 20 I wanted. The youth and the free spirit. I was retired, but it was middle-aged I wanted. The presence of mind without limitations. My life was over and never, and I never got what I wanted. That's a pretty sad point, man. And it, but, but again, this was coming from a 14-year-old back in 1989, and I think you know, this speaks to us and a lot of times in our society. You know, we're not always happy with the season, right? We're not always happy with the season of life. You know, when it's, when it's hot days, we want, we want it to be cooler. When it's cool days, we want it to be warmer. And so we're never, I mean, as a society, as, as, a, as people, we're never really content with whatever circumstance we're in. But Paul was encouraging the church to be content in whatever circumstance they're in. 
And, and, and Paul realized that, that the, the, the only reason that we can have true joy, the only reason that we can have satisfaction can only come through a relationship with Christ and growing in Him. Again, I know that our circumstances and routines aren't normal. We aren't in a normal routine. Um, uh, e even those of us who are able to work, we're not in a normal routine. Uh, here at the office, uh, we are rotating our staff through, through the office, and we're not all here uh, during the week. Uh, we're, uh, we're here one, or one to two days a week. And so it's, it's something that's, that's a little bit different. We are working from home and doing things and making contact, uh, studying and, and doing things there, but it's, but it, but it's different. Um, you know, and you know, right now for for my for my family, if if it wasn't for the coronavirus, we'd be right in the middle of baseball season. I love baseball. I enjoy baseball. I was helping coach Josiah's team in baseball, um, and he um, again it, he, he's eight, and this was his last year for coach pitch. And I, and I hate it. It stinks that he's not able to be able to have his eight year old season uh, through baseball. But at the same time, through this, we've learned. That we that we we've had to make some adjustments uh, at, at home. Uh, we've had to, to, to learn to, to be content with where we are. Uh, before the coronavirus hit, we were um, uh, my routine was I was up at least by six o'clock in the morning. Uh, would spend time in God's Word. Uh, Josiah's alarm usually goes off at six thirty-five. Julie was getting ready for work. Uh, we would do our devotion before Josiah went to school, um, and so that that was our routine. Now since the coronavirus has hit, Josiah's been home. Uh, for several weeks now, and so, so our routine has changed, um, and we, we've adjusted with that. Now, I'm not necessarily, I'm not getting up at 6 o'clock. I'm up by 6.30 every day now, uh, but that's because my internal clock will not let me sleep any past 6.30. Uh, but even though, I, I mean, as I'm getting up at 6.30, Julie's still getting up, and she's going to work. Uh, and uh, so she, she, she's still getting up, going to work, but at, at the same time, from 6.30 to about 7.30, because Josiah's not getting up at 7.30, I have, an, I have an hour there that is carved out of my day where I can spend time in God's Word, spend time in prayer. And I'm grateful and thankful that I can be content in that. Uh, now, we are still doing our devotion before Julie goes off to, off to work, before I go to work. And so, um, so, so, so we are still doing those things. But again, our time has changed. It, it, it is adjusted. But we're learning to be content in that. Um, you know, and again, I, I love baseball. I miss baseball. I miss the kids. I miss being around the kids. Um, I miss I, I miss that you know, immensely. Uh, but, you know, for us, what we're trying to do as a family is we're trying to get outside as much as possible, uh, especially in the evenings. I remember we'd get outside with Josiah, even during the day some, uh, you know, because we're homeschooling now, right? Uh, when I am in, a home, in the home some, we're able to get outside with him uh, at lunchtime or sometime after to, uh, to go outside and, and hit baseballs or to play kickballs or do things to keep him active. And, but I'm learning to be content with that right now. now does, that, does that mean that I, that's, all, that's all I ever want to do the rest of my life? No. But, I, but I'm learning to be content in that. And so I want to encourage parents to treasure this time with your kids. If, if you have kids at home, treasure this time with your kids. Uh, enjoy the time with them. Uh, be creative. Uh, study God's word together. I want to encourage you to do that. Be, be, be content with where you are right now, and 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 where we're not as busy as we have been. And again, I know that some of you that are listening tonight don't have kids at home, and and you may not be able to go, you may not be able to get outdoors like you like you would like, or you may be, maybe not able to do uh, and go a, as you usually do. But I want to encourage you to seek Christ and to lean on Him for strength in this time. Lean on Christ and. It, for, for strength through this time. And I know there's some of you even that don't, that, that don't have a spouse at home and that, that, that you're single. And you may have a lot of time just by yourself right now. I know that's tough. I, know, I, I can't imagine exactly what you're going through uh, with, with, with that. Uh, but again, lean on Christ through this time. Lean on Christ and be content on Him. Now when everything gets back to somewhat normal, continue to lean on Christ. Continue to lean on Christ and be content in him and so that's what Paul is, is encouraging for us to, to be content on him now Paul said if, if the, 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 the second thing that we, that we see here tonight is that Paul said that contentment can be learned contentment can be learned uh, two times in verses in, in these verses Paul says he learned contentment contentment isn't something that comes with having uh, it, it isn't something that just comes just by having a relationship with Christ okay I have a relationship with Christ I'm content now right no, that, that's, that, that doesn't happen. It comes from learning that Christ is enough. 
And how do we learn that Christ is enough? It's a day by day. It's a process. We continue in, our, in, our, in growing in our relationship with Christ, and we continue to lean on Him, continue to, to see that, that He gives us strength. And so that contentment comes through, through that. Through, uh, through life experiences, Paul learned this lesson. Uh, again, before Paul was a believer, he was a Pharisee. He was a Pharisee of Pharisees, it says. And so, um, and Paul had a lot of things that he wanted. Again, if, when he was at Lydia's home in Philippi, he, he probably could have eaten steak and potatoes. He was, he was doing those things. And he was enjoying, uh, enjoying the greater things of life. But again, Paul didn't always have everything great. Uh, after Paul became a believer, he, 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 was, he was kicked out, and he was shunned by those that he was closest to. Uh, and that could not have been hard. That, could, that had to be hard. Again, uh, in Philippi, he probably had a lot he, in, in, when he was staying there in Philippi. But after that, we know that Paul continued on his missionary journeys. In, in, in First and Second Corinthians, Paul speaks of some hardship he faced. Um, in in uh, 1 Corinthians 4, verses 11 and 12, it says, To the present hour we hunger and thirst. We are poorly dressed and buffeted uh, with homelessness, and we labor, working with our hands when, re when, re when reviled, we bless. When persecuted, we endure. And so Paul was homeless. He didn't have anything. And so in that, he was still able to praise God. In 1 Corinthians 6, 4 and 5, it says, But as servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way, by great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, and hunger. So Paul went without. 2 Corinthians 11, 25 through 27 says, Three times I was beaten with rods, once stoned, three times I was shipwrecked. At night, um, and I was adrift at sea on frequent journeys in danger from rivers, of, from robbers, danger from my own, danger from Gentiles, danger from the city, danger from the wilderness, danger at sea, danger from false brothers, and toil and hardship through many a sleepless night, and hunger and thirst, often without food, and cold and, and exposure. So Paul had, had, had his experienced the highs of highs. He experienced the lows of lows. And a lot of us, maybe we haven't experienced those highs of highs. We haven't experienced those lows and lows. Maybe we just kind of stayed, stayed on this normal, uh, uh, just just regular path. But again, Paul knew good times and knew bad times. He knew the highest of highs. He knew the lowest of lows. In life, again, we will go through highs. We will go through lows, and that's okay. Being content doesn't mean we have to become lazy either. Doesn't doesn't mean we become lazy. Being content doesn't also also doesn't mean that we need to give up. And so. Being content must be learned. I know as a parent, we hate to see our kids fail or be disappointed in anything. But again, sometimes when our kids fail, when they have failure, when there's disappointment, that's when they learn. That's when they learn to grow. Uh, it's, it's through those times. And so this is where we learn to, 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 uh, to be content. And, every, and, and so this, this is where it helps to learn contentment. As a believer in Christ, we must learn to be content in Christ through every high and every low. This is what Paul means when he says, I can do all things through him who gives me strength. He has learned to be content, whether it's high, whether it's low, whether it's in between. He's learned to be content in his relationship with Christ. And so the last thing that we're going to see, that we see tonight is that contentment flows from our relationship and reliance on Christ. Contentment flows from our relationship and reliance on Christ. The secret, which is not really a secret to contentment, is rooted in in our relationship with and our reliance on Christ Jesus. This relationship, uh, this relationship that we have with Christ unites us with God the Father and calls, us, calls on us to rely on the Holy Spirit to help us through each and every circumstance and life situation. Let me read that one more time. The relationship we have with Christ unites us with, the, with, the God, with, with God the Father and calls on us to rely on the Holy Spirit to help us through each and every circumstance and situation in life. And this is where Paul was, and this is where I hope we are as believers, that we will seek to be as believers. Again, Paul wasn't saying that he could do anything. He wasn't saying, I can run through a brick building. Again, Paul was in prison. He wasn't saying he could just break the chains on his own, right? He wasn't saying he could just, he could just get up and leave and do whatever he wanted to do. He wasn't saying that. Uh, you know, I talked to our youth the other night in regards to this verse briefly. And I say, you know, you think about Alabama and Auburn in, in, in our great state. And, you know, an Alabama player may they put that, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And an Auburn player may put the, the, that same thing, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. 
That doesn't mean they're both going to get the tackle or they're both going to get the touchdown. That just means that they have learned to be content in what, whatever happens. But they have done their best. They, they have strived. They've done their best. And that's what Paul is saying. He, is, he, he has done his best. He has a relationship with Christ. And he's learned to be content with whatever comes his way. So again, he, he's saying that, that, that whatever experience in life, anything that through him, he is confident, Paul is saying he is confident in who he is in Christ. And it is Christ that helps him in and through every situation. And that's where I hope that we are tonight, that, that no matter what life throws at us, no matter whether it's the coronavirus or anything else, that we can be content, found being content in Christ and in Christ alone. And so as we wrap up tonight, as we finish tonight, I want us to remember, remember these three things. That we need to be content in God's plan for our life. Be content in God's plan for your life. None of us had, had this plan. None of us had coronavirus planned in our life. But be content with what God has us in our life. The second thing I want you to remember is that contentment can be learned. Contentment can be learned. And the third thing ultimately is that contentment flows from our relationship and reliance on Christ. Contentment flows from our relationship and reliance on Christ. And so how do we respond tonight? The first response is if you do not know Jesus and you do not have a relationship with Christ, my, my urgent plea is for you to come to a relationship with him, to come to know him. If you want to know him, uh, you can comment below. Uh, you can send me an email, Stephen at UnionHillBaptist.org. Uh, you can uh, call us here at the church. Uh, if you need my phone number, I'll be glad to give that to you as well. You can you can find me on Facebook. Uh, just just let me know. I would love for someone to come to know Christ. Uh, for those who do know Him, how do we respond tonight? We respond by learning to grow and be content in our relationship and our reliance on Christ. Because our relationship relies on him to get us through in, 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 get us through everything. And so I want to thank you again for tonight for tuning in. I want to thank you for the opportunity uh, for this. And uh, if y'all need anything throughout this week, please let us know. Please call the church. Please call one of our cell phones on the staff. We want to try to meet every need that we can uh, through this time. And uh, continue to make sure you make contact with, uh, with people. And if y'all need anything, please let us know. Thank you. Love you guys.